Screamers, Lewis here from Fright Tour. I'm back on your screen with those honest, truthful, and unbiased reviews that you have come to love here at Fright Tour. I cannot wait to get back into the groove of things and start screaming and start experiencing all new haunted attractions spanning four different states, including Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. Yes, I am talking about the haunted attractions of the Northeast. You know it. I know it. We all know it. I am brutally honest. I am truthful. I am unbiased. I will not shy away. If I do not like it, I will state the facts, my opinions, my recommendations, and my overall observations of the entire attraction. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get to our first official review of the 2022 Fright Tour. But before we get into it, you know what time it is. It's time for you to subscribe and ring that bell here for my YouTube channel if you already haven't done so. What are you waiting for? Don't you want to know where the best place is each Halloween for you to spend your money and get the best scream? The best scream for your buck? Don't you want to know? Then click the subscribe button and ring that bell so that way you are notified every single time I come out with a new review, a new video for your viewing and screaming pleasure. Click it now. Our first stop on this year's tour brings us to a town called Stratford, Connecticut, located about three and a half hours away from home. This attraction boasts two different haunted houses, including Hotel Hex and The Witching Hour. And of course, you know me, I'm really eager, I'm really excited to get this tour started, so I couldn't wait. And I started digging around to see exactly what I could find out about this attraction because it didn't seem to really have much on the radar. So I found this video that you're watching right now on your screen and this video, uh, the production value is really high. The quality of the video is really high. So I was expecting to walk into a very elaborate, a very detailed, a very high energy in your face, scary attraction from this video. Now, my mom always taught me, you don't want to judge a book by its cover and it's always wrong. So I took this into consideration and I did not hold any water to it. So let's talk about our first haunt of this year, Fright Haven. As you roll up to the venue, it's located in the far corner of a shopping plaza. It looks like an old warehouse office building with a window and brick facade. You get out of your car, you start walking up to it. There's this mural or big gigantic photo in the windows but you can't really make out what it is because it's kind of dark and then it has led lights that are all dancing along the perimeter of the the roof to this obnoxiously loud horrendous rock music now listen if you've followed me for years and years and years and years you know that when you're operating a haunted attraction you kind of want to set the tone before you go in so why would you have really loud, obnoxious grunge rock music? It just doesn't make any sense. I, I want spooky music. I want like thunder, crows, stuff like that. You're about to walk into a haunted attraction. So maybe I'm being nitpicky. Maybe I'm looking uh, some for something to complain about for my first haunt. But I don't know. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, really? I'm like, come on. You're called Fright Haven. This isn't a rock concert. Why do we have obnoxiously loud rock music blaring from the building and why can't i see that damn photo in your damn window it was huge and i couldn't see it i literally could not see it until i got to the front of it so in my opinion horrible marketing horrible uh showcase of what the building is like light it the hell up once inside you grab your ticket you walk down this very long and dim lit hallway that i assume is pretty much their queue line they have a vip line and then they have the regular general admission line. So you walk down this really dark hallway, you come into a big gigantic opening, which is basically this like uh, courtyard where you have like your haunt off, some of the haunt like off to your left, and then you have the more queue line over to the right. And you see the facade of what is to be, well, I actually didn't know what it was until I got right up to the greeter. It was the entrance to the Hotel Hex. Very bad lighting, no signage, uh, really minimal detail on the outside of this. It looked like a bunch of wood with uh, windows boarded up and that was pretty much it. There was no detailing to the outside. So I, I didn't know at first what I was walking into and then when I got to the front, I'm like, oh, okay, this is the hotel. So we're about to walk through the hotel hex. So you know in the beginning of the video when I said you don't want to judge a book by its cover or you don't want to watch a video and assume that it's going to be something really fantastic, scary, and all in your face? 
Well, I really made the mistake of watching that video because it really made me think that I was about to. And let me tell you, that video is 100% misleading. And I don't know if that was their intention, if they had someone who was really good at videography, video editing, and all that type of stuff. But once inside the attraction, let me just say, you don't know where Hotel Hex and Witching Hour essentially really begin. There's no signage. The attraction itself, I don't want to say was half-assed because nothing in this industry is half-assed. A lot of work and effort goes into it, so I can't do that. But it just felt short. There's minimal detail. There's minimal theming. It was plywood with paint and some detailing on it. Props, you know, rooms were minimal. But it wasn't at all in the caliber of what the video demonstrated this attraction to essentially be. And I know that the video that we watched essentially is like really a commercial. It's like a mini movie of the attraction. It's not really people walking through the attraction themselves. However, you would think that the video you're posting on YouTube would have some correlation to what your attraction actually is. And by all means, this does not. This attraction was a 20 minute walk from start to finish. Like I said, it was plywood with paint, minimal sets, minimal detailing, and the actors, they were so infuriating. And I don't know if this is because of the direction they've been given, if they haven't actually gone through training, if they randomly picked people off the side of the street and said, here, put on a mask and try to scare people. I have no idea. But after the fourth or fifth time that I walked into a room, there are many rooms, after the fourth or fifth time that I walked into a room and the haunt actor just stood up against the wall trying to look fake and you knew they weren't fake trying to look fake and all they did was just stand there and then just rotate their head ever so slowly towards you and look at you or they'd sit in a chair they would do the same exact thing or they move suddenly they didn't use dark spaces they didn't use dark corners they didn't use hiding spaces they didn't use anything they were pretty much out in the open doing a skit or standing along the wall, or sitting in a chair and moving as you walked up. Eh, doesn't do it for me. That ain't scary. Whole point of a haunted house is a startle scare, so get into those nooks and crannies, find the dark spaces, make some loud noises, scream. Oh, and speaking of screaming, when I walk through a haunted attraction and the first girl screams in my ear, I'll let it slide. The second one, maybe. The third, fourth, fifth, and sixth girl that decides to get behind me and ultimately scream at the top of their lungs needs to go. I don't find a scream like that scary. It can be when it's done right, and it may be done at a very low, repetitive amount, but when it's constantly used, it becomes annoying. Like, I actually sat there at the last one, and I was like, oh my god, I'm like, really? Honestly, can you come up with anything different? If it wasn't standing up against the wall, it wasn't sitting in a chair or screaming in your ear, you just walked. And they had some nice things. I'm not going to, you know, take away some things from them. They had this one section where you ultimately came out, I believe you came out of the hotel and you were making your way into the witching hour. I'm not entirely sure. But you got up onto this ledge and it had railing and it was wood. And basically the actor would lead you down. And then as your entire group was on the ledge, the entire thing would shift and drop. So that was a cool scare. Weirdly put, weirdly placed. It had no kind of point to it at all. Like that really honestly should have been something maybe in the hotel, like where you're walking down a hallway or, or maybe like down a, down a hallway with like a banister. And then like, you know, all of a sudden the, the, the whole thing decides to give. That would have been really cool, but it just really didn't have any kind of point. Immediately after that, we walked through this like gigantic hedge, this ivy hedge. And I was like, ooh, this is so cool. The lighting behind it, the way it cascaded all over and created shadows. And there was like these little nooks where like hiding places where actors could hide in, but there was literally no one in there. And you know what it was missing? Fog. The entire attraction, not one bit of fog, not one bit of complete darkness, no claustrophobia, no uh, darkness, no disorientation. Nothing. It was a simple, simple, very simple 20 minute walk through two attractions from start to finish with actors who stood up against the wall, rotated heads, sat on, on a chair, rotated heads and girls who screamed bloody murder in your ears to pop your eardrums. When I actually came out of the end of this attraction, I was like, that's it. 
I was like, wait a minute, we're done? That's it? This is all this place has to offer? Luckily, I mean, I ended up, you know, getting a t-shirt that you see I'm wearing here because I like to wear, you know, memorabilia from the places that I'm visiting and support them because I do know that going, you know, and building something like this, it does take a lot of effort, energy, sweat, tears, blood, money. It does. I, I fully get that. But when you're going to charge $25, you're going to promote videos on your YouTube channel and that caliber and that quality live up to it, you know, put some really heavy detail in, into the haunted attractions themselves. Maybe just make it one haunt, you know, take those actors, move them into the, to the hotel, give them some training, put some more expensive detail into the actual attraction itself, fully immerse the person. Oh, and let me tell you something. Okay. It was a Saturday night. The parking lot maybe had, I don't know, like 15 cars in it. But for some reason, the grouper at the front n felt the need. Okay felt the need to make the interval times between each group very, very small. Now, I'm sorry. Your interval times between each group should essentially correlate with how long your line is. I waited two minutes. About halfway through the attraction, the couple in front of me was practically in, in bed with each other, okay, holding each other, walking ever so slowly. I caught up to them, who also caught up to the group in front of them, which were a bunch of kids that had to examine and touch everything. Ugh, it's so frustrating to go to a haunt and you're not able to enjoy it because you have a group in front of you that, I don't know, can't leave them their hands off of each other. They practically have to make love while they're walking through the attraction. It's so annoying. It's not about that. You're scared. Okay, yes, I can understand. But literally, this wasn't scary. So I don't know what this girl was cowering in her boyfriend's shoulder for the entire time because I didn't jump once. I didn't startle once. I didn't scream once. No vocal anything came from my body during this attraction. So if it's like this the entire year, I don't know. Um, I would definitely say get there as early as possible because it is an indoor haunt. You can do it when it is somewhat light outside, like literally at 7 p.m. when they open the gates. Because I would assume as it gets closer and closer to Halloween, it gets more and more busier. And from there, you have a conga style line. And that just is not going to cut it in this haunt because you're going to be ultimately bored. And I hate to say that. I really do. It bothers me when, you know me, I, I hate, you know, ripping an attraction apart like this. And I always say that I'm never going to, but sometimes you just can't help it. I ramble. I really apologize. I don't think it's right that I rip a haunted attraction in this caliber, but sometimes it has to be done. If you're in the area of Stratford, Connecticut, New Haven, Shelton, Hartford, New York City, any of those areas, and you're looking for a good haunt, in my honest and uttermost truthful opinion... Fright Haven is a definite no-go. It does not cross or check any of the boxes that I had when I was reviewing it. It's not scary. It's not at all creepy. There's no detailing. The actors lack any kind of enthusiasm and training or direction. The attraction itself has really overall just bad setup and bad layout. You can't tell what it is from afar or where it is. It kind of looks, I mean, the building in the parking lot actually is a lot more creepy than what's inside. So, you know, if I were in that area, I would definitely be looking for something else. Fright Haven isn't on my list of things to do as a haunt in that area. I, I'm sorry. I have to say it. So for the first review of the 2022 Fright Tour, I have to provide Fright Haven with a one skull out of five. And this is mainly because of all the issues that I namely, you know, provided during this review. Um, actors, detailing, not being scared at all, not screaming, grouping, everything from top to bottom. It, it, once again, it did not check any boxes for me. But if you're going to bring a family, if you have kids who are easily scared or a girlfriend who's easily scared and you want her to practically, you know, jump on top of you while you're walking through, then by all means, Fright Haven might be for you. For me or someone who's looking for something a lot more scarier, a lot more intense, a lot more in your face, a lot more immersive, Fright Haven is a definite no-go. So unfortunately, this is the first, hopefully the last, one skull out of five that I give this year. Well, guys, that is it. That is it for my first 2022 Fright Tour review of Fright Haven of Stratford, Connecticut. 
I really appreciate you guys continuing to support Fright Tour, continuing to be active on our Facebook page, and of course our YouTube channel. Don't forget to have your friends and family subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, because it is important. You are spending money this year. Let's spend it right. Let's get you the best screams. Let's make you scared beyond all hell. Let's make you jump. Let's get you out of your skin. And the only way we're going to do that is if me and you work together and we get Fright Tour going as the best and only honest and truthful review website in the entire Northeast. I review all the way down from the Virginias all the way up to Maine. So if you are in that general area, you need to like us on Facebook and of course subscribe to the YouTube channel. And of course visit our beautiful and hauntingly website that I have built from scratch where you will find all of the information regarding haunted attractions in your area, reviews, ratings, and of course my top 13 list of 2022. So until our next review, guys. Happy screaming.